My work focuses on women's reproductive health in developing countries. And this comes out of my clinical background as an obstetrician gynecologist and my anthropological work. I've done a fair amount of work on childbirth trauma in developing countries, the problem of obstructed labor and obstetric fistulas. I'm also engaged in a long-term project on menstrual hygiene, education, and improvement of girls' ability to stay in schools in northern Ethiopia. I'm excited about two projects. One is a project to open a new women and children's health center in Soroti in northern Uganda with Alice Imasu. It's been her vision to do this for 10 years, ever since she worked with me on her master's degree, and the construction is complete and the hospital is going to be opening soon. One of my big passions is improving menstrual hygiene education in northern Ethiopia through an organization called Dignity Period. This was started when I was a Fulbright Scholar at Mekele University in northern Ethiopia. And I met this remarkable woman named Frawini Mabratu, who had built a factory to produce reusable menstrual pads because nothing was available aside from terribly inadequate disposable products. So we set up a program to purchase and distribute these throughout the schools in northern Ethiopia along with educational programs for both girls and boys and to date we've reached almost 300,000 students. We've also demonstrated a 24 percent decrease in school absences among girls uh, compared to boys after the introduction of our programs. Girls miss school because they don't have menstrual hygiene products. And if you get your period unexpectedly at 12 or 13 in school and have a terrible accident, it can be humiliating. And so a lot of girls will either drop out of school or they'll stay home for three to five days each month when their period comes on. They'll fall behind and eventually they drop out. And we know from a public health standpoint that educating girls and women is one of the most cost-effective ways of improving the health of a population overall. One of the great problems in the world is the burden that women have to bear because they are the child bearers and the reproducers. And a lot of the terrible tragedies that I have seen in poor countries around the world have come from women who are pregnant, who may not have had any option or choice into when they got pregnant or how often they got pregnant and then couldn't receive adequate obstetric care when they had an emergency. So a lot of what I've done in Africa has been trying to help overcome the lack of access to emergency obstetrical care when problems arise and to develop clinical programs to help meet the needs of women who suffer catastrophic injuries in, in childbirth through no fault of their own.